This is the Loa Alpine Uprise 30 Pack. This is a technical mountaineering pack. It weighs in at just over two pounds. And this is the first review in the installment of my huge pack shootout. Initially, I was thinking seven packs, it's grown. Now we're looking at doing 12 packs and this might only be the first phase. I would love to do a secondary shootout as well. Let me know in the comments, you guys, if you wanna see reviews on every single pack or if you'd rather just see a shootout. We're doing the shootout regardless. I need to know whether you wanna see individual reviews on every pack that's gonna be in the shootout. The Loa Alpine Uprise was a collaboration with multiple alpinists that got together to design the perfect pack. I agree with them on almost everything except for maybe one. So you have the ability to carry two ice tools or an ice ax. You have compression straps on the side and you do have lashing points on the front of the pack for crampons, helmets, and other gear. This is a brainless pack. However, if you unsecure the pack, you will find a zippered compartment here. I've used this to stash keys, snacks, batteries, etc. The pack was designed with no frills in mind. You won't find any unnecessary features that helps keep the pack extremely light. I have packed a full Alpine kit with a 60 meter, nine millimeter rope, two ice tools, full ice rack in this pack. You do have a somewhat padded suspension system. Now, if you take a look at the hip belt, you've got pieces of paper. And of course, this is to save weight and some ultra light purists remove the hip belt entirely. I am not one of those guys. I require a hip belt. I often carry heavy loads in the Alpine. What I learned was this hip belt was sufficient in terms of comfort. The shoulder straps on the suspension system, I had to loosen them quite a bit to get it comfortable. With this pack being loose enough to be comfortable, it wasn't fitting very tight to the body. And so I had lots of sway back and forth with the pack when I was traveling over technical terrain. I was not a huge fan of that. This pack is made out of a 210 veneer ripstop fabric and it's bomber. Yes, for sure. The fabric is very durable. It's very strong and it is miraculous how lightweight it is for how capable the pack is. This pack is not going to fall apart on you. It is very durable. This feels like a larger pack than 30 liters. I was able to pack this pack full of gear and it expands quite a bit. Because of the minimalist suspension system, I would recommend carrying under 30 pounds of weight in this pack. I had probably 35 to 40 pounds of weight in this pack. And though I was able to get the pack to be comfortable, with dropping the weight on my hips and decreasing all the weight off my shoulders, the sway back and forth really makes me dislike this pack for heavier loads. So I would like to load this pack up similarly to how I would load it up on an Alpine climb so you guys can see how the gear stows on the pack. Now, one thing you'll notice before I put any ice tools on this is it doesn't have any tool cord up here to secure the shaft of your ax. And that's fine. They've done that to mitigate weight. And as you can see here, that's why this compression strap runs through this fabric here. This is technically where you would secure the shaft. And, and that seems to work okay. It's probably not as fast in terms of uh, stowing or removing your tool from your pack. But in an effort to save weight, that's why they've done that. I'm gonna put on my Edelrid Rage tools. So a lot of people would slide this through the pick sheath first down here at the bottom of the pack, but then it becomes more or less difficult to secure the shaft. And so oftentimes you can loosen the compression strap and put your shaft through the strap like so, and then slide it through the sheath here. And you've got the metal stays here down at the bottom to secure the axe and it works really well like so. Now we'll tighten up our compression strap and we have a secured ice tool. And uh, it is very secure. It's not going anywhere. I am a fan of this. Now I could take it or leave it in terms of the webbing that some manufacturers will add to secure the shaft. 
this works really well most likely it's more reliable than webbing now i like using these straps here to secure my crampons to the front of the pack which will save space inside the pack And these are the Edelrid Beast Light Crampons. And I typically try to stow the tail of this in the crampon uh, just so I don't have pressure pulling against where it's secured so I lose my crampons. Now, I've lost a pair of crampons before not using one of these. It was actually using a C to Summit branded lashing system. And so I am super cautious with how I secure my crampons. Okay, and then on the outside of the pack, I typically will bring pickets if I'm going to be protecting snow. Now, this was a requirement of mine to enter this pack shootout is to have the ability to stow pickets on the outside of the pack. And of course that would mean compression straps on the side. So of course this pack has some. I always put the cable above the compression strap to aid in securing the picket. Because once you have your compression straps nice and tight, it's not going to fall past the steel cable there. So this is how I would roll with this pack on the glacier and it's very confined i really like that my only con like i said was the suspension system having to sway back and forth for it to be comfortable with a significant amount of weight in the pack so the one flaw i see here and of course lightweight packs are going to get replaced more often just because they inevitably will be less durable on the stitching here where the crampon is secured, the fabric stitched to the pack is starting to tear in one location right here. And yeah, not everyone's going to put their crampons on the outside of the pack. And so this may not be a concern to you. I also may be securing my crampons tighter than other climbers would be because I've lost one in the mountains before. Regardless, I would have liked to have seen double stitching at every stitch point of this fabric where it ties into the pack. At the top and bottom of the lashing system here, it is double stitched, but in between here where it's reinforced, it is single stitched. And I don't believe that is adequate enough to secure crampons on the outside of the pack over time. I do have several climbs in this pack and it's still working, but now I have to keep an eye on it and get it repaired. So this has been the Loa Alpine Uprise 30 pack. A lot of these packs in this shootout are going to be given away to subscribers. No catch at all. I'll release more information on that later. So I'm pretty sure I have the pack lineup for the shootout. But if you have suggestions, please leave them in the comments. I will post here soon what packs I'm thinking of doing. If you guys found this video valuable, please consider subscribing.